After the initial release of the TK Actions V5 panel, Tony received several suggestions for additional features from his customers. This update includes many of these requested features. The changes do not remove the original functions from any buttons, but some great new features have been added. The updates are only available for the Creative Cloud version of the V5 panel. All of the new functionality isn't possible in Photoshop CS6. My V5 Video Guide tutorials show you how all the original V5 features work, and in this video I'll guide you through all the new stuff. One small but helpful addition is that when you go to the Extensions folder, all of the V5 modules now have the letters TK in front of them, which makes them much easier to find. Tony has now also theme matched all of the rollover help windows. This makes for a much cleaner look to the panel and it blends in better with the overall theme chosen as the Photoshop interface. The help messages still appear in the rollover windows, but these windows are no longer in eye-catching white. Several changes were made to the control module. I'm going to quickly just make a levels adjustment layer and then show you that the group button will place any selected layers into a group with a white mask. But now if you hold down the Alt or Option key on a Mac and click the Group button, it will place any selected layers into a group with a black mask. White masks are best when an adjustment is going to be used across an entire image, while black masks are better if you're painting in adjustments that affect only small parts of the image. When you click either a Burn or Dodge button, transparent burning and dodging layers are created. The advantage of this is that a selection can be made from the dodging and burning by simply holding down Control or Command and clicking on the dodge or burn layer. Now with the enhanced functionality, if you hold down the Alt or Option key and then click on a dodge or burn layer, it creates the corresponding burn or dodge layer filled with 50% gray. The advantage of the 50% gray fill provides better visibility of where paint is applied to the layer if a selection will not need to be made later. In its original functionality, the View button would take an active selection like the one I have now and allow you to view it, and it also would open up a Levels dialog box so that you could adjust the mask with the levels to refine it, and then when you clicked OK, that selection would now reflect those changes made by the Levels dialog. With the new Enhanced version, if you hold down the Alt or the Option key and click on the View button, Instead of a levels adjustment, you get a curves adjustment. The advantage of this is that some people prefer curves to levels and feel that curves provides a wider array of adjustment options. The intro module has been redesigned to incorporate the spectrum interface first introduced in the V4 panel. With it, the relative amount of tones selected by each mask is suggested by the location and width of the buttons, which are placed against a tonal gradient background. Wide buttons select more tones, narrow buttons select fewer tones. For people who are new to luminosity masks, this arrangement can help visualize the tonal range of each mask. The intro module is meant to be a place not only for people who are new to luminosity masks, but also as an introduction to the functioning of the rapid mask and layer mask modules, which use the same basic processes for creating luminosity masks, but with more channel and modification features. In all of the modules, including the Rapid Mask module, the Infinity button has been enhanced. The original function of the Infinity button was to be able to use a Levels Adjustment dialog to modify and customize any Luminosity mask. Now, Alt or Option clicking on the Infinity button opens a Curves dialog instead of a Levels dialog and this gives you more refinement opportunities. Additional functionality that's been added to the Infinity button is if you hold down the Shift key and click on it, instead of modifying the currently viewed mask, it'll now modify the mask that's attached to whichever layer is selected in the layer stack. And this allows you to now modify that layer mask and watch the changes of the layer mask modifications 
to the image in real time. This is great because it allows you to further refine a mask that's already been applied to a layer and get that mask dialed in just right. And this means that you don't have to necessarily get the mask perfect before you apply it to the layer. In the Rapid Mask module, the original function of the Paint button was to set up saturation painting by creating the necessary pixel layer and setting the foreground background colors to red-gray. Now if you go away from saturation painting and change the foreground background colors, the enhanced functionality allows you to hold down Alt or Option and click on the Paint button and that will reset the foreground background colors for additional saturation painting but without creating an entirely new saturation painting layer. In the Rapid Mask module in its original functionality, checking the Auto Apply checkbox essentially converts the Rapid Mask module into the Layer Mask module so that any of the buttons now auto apply a mask or a mask modification directly to the layer mask of the active layer. This Auto Apply checkbox gives Creative Cloud users the ability to have both the Rapid Mask and Layer Mask module functionality combined into a single module. As part of the enhancement, now when you check the Auto Apply box, the words Auto Apply change to green and the black background tone pulses from black to gray. This better distinguishes this state from the normal state of the Rapid Mask module so you don't forget that you have it checked. Additionally, when you go to the Layer Mask module, the new background for the Luminosity Lock section tone pulses from black to gray then back to black. So this also helps distinguish the Layer Mask module from the Rapid Mask module so that you'll remember which one you're in. Finally, a whole bunch of enhancements have been made to the Actions module. Originally the Clarity button would add a Clarity layer which would add edge contrast to the image by using the standard pixel layer employing a high pass filter. Now if you hold down the Alt or Option key and click on the Clarity button, it'll create the high pass Clarity layer, but it uses a smart object for the layer instead of a regular pixel layer. And this allows the blur radius to be changed after the initial run. So if we start with this, and you decide later that you want to change the amount of high pass, you just double click on high pass and reopen the high pass dialog and further fine tune the high pass clarity adjustment. If you'd like to run the Orton effect and have the Orton effect be done as a smart object, you can also hold down the Alt or Option key when you click the Orton effect button and this also allows you to go back and double click on the Gaussian Blur Smart Filter if you want to fine tune or adjust the amount of blur in your Orton effect at a later time. The Personal Action or Numbered Buttons allow you to record your own custom action that then runs when you push that particular button. The new enhancement allows you to hold down the Alt or the Option key and click on a button and open a dialog box that allows you to name that button something else. You don't have a lot of space so you might need to use an abbreviation so for example instead of watermark I'll just use WM and now that button instead of saying number one says WM. Additionally if you hold down the control or command key and click on one of those buttons it opens a dialog that lets you change what the rollover help message will say. So here you can use more letters. For example I'll say this is my watermark action. And now when I roll over that I get that in the help window. And at any time, if you want to reset that, you can hold down the Shift key and click on one of those buttons, and it will reset everything back to the defaults. The font size in the Web Sharpening Dimension and Opacity windows is now larger, and this is to make it easier for people who have very high resolution monitors to be able to read those numbers. And in some certain circumstances, a user might see a handle on the bottom of the Actions module that can be grabbed to shorten the panel somewhat. This is a workaround to fool Photoshop into thinking that the panel can be shorter than it actually is. It's helpful for users who want to create a three high stack of V5 modules like I have, but don't have enough resolution or monitor space. 
Photoshop will still display the contents of the panel, but it will cut off the rollover help at the bottom. And finally, in the batch module, multidimensional batch web sharpening is now available. If images need to be output to different sizes, multiple dimensions can be entered in the dimension field. It's just necessary to separate each value with a semicolon and have no spaces. For example, I could input 500 semicolon 1000 semicolon 1500. Using this example, three images will be output for every input image, each one having one of the three listed dimensions, 500 pixels, 1000 pixels, and 1500 pixels. The action adds a suffix to each output image listing the dimension to which it has been sized. So that's quite a list of enhancements and improvements to the V5 panel, which was already the most advanced luminosity mask panel available. Tony Kuiper's work with luminosity masks and actions panels never stops, and he's always looking for ways to make them better, more efficient, and more user-friendly. I hope this video will help you quickly take advantage of all these great new features.